This is Lieutenant Brandon Negri with the Office of Inspector General. Today is August 11, 2017. It's 11.58 a.m. OIG Investigation 2017-0426. Initial interview with Texas Ranger Brent Davis. Brent, can you spell your last name, please? D-A-V-I-S. Our office is currently conducting an administrative investigation into allegations submitted by the Texas Ranger Chain of Command. I presented you with Department of Complaint uh, OIG 2017-0426. Uh, you have uh, initialed and received notification of it and have waived the rebuttal. Is that correct? That's correct. And in this complaint, there was one allegation. I'm going to read this to you. Okay. It is alleged Texas Ranger Brent Davis engaged in an inappropriate relationship with a murder victim's widow. Yeah, I'm going to make sure I'm saying this right. The first name is Faze. Uh, Faza Faze. Faza, Faza Horne, after taking a significant role in the investigation of the crime. And that's the one allegation we're going to discuss today. Okay. This allegation, mm -hmm. Brent, is this true? Yes. All right. Well, why don't you take me through kind of how I got to this? from the start to where we're at today. Okay. Um, her husband was killed, I think on May 30th of 2016. I was contacted by the Gray County Sheriff. Before uh, we go further, yeah. did you know her or her family prior to the, the murder? No, I did not. Okay. Um, well, I knew the name of the Rainy because they have a feed store in town and it was one of those that I mean, everybody knew the last name Rainey Feed Store, but I did not know her or anybody in that family at that time. Um, I got contacted, I believe, on the 31st to come assist with the investigation. We started working on the investigation. Um, had contact with the children, the mother, did some interviews with the kids, and then worked uh, as the investigation progressed. Worked on the investigation till sometime the beginning of July. Um, during all that time, I had. And this is 2016. Correct. Yeah, May, May, the end of May 2016 through July, mid July 2016. <clears throat> had contact with the uh, the Wafaza several times. With uh, I had one of the Great County investigators that I was working with at the time, uh, Ben Reynolds. He and I. Uh, we communicate with her, getting different pieces of evidence. The uh, the oldest daughter, Betty, she uh, and so we kind of, I guess, had a little bit of a bond. Um, started talking to the daughter a little bit, and she would contact me from time to time uh, if she was having a bad day or whatever during the investigation. <clears throat> Spent some time with her, you know, kind of talking through things. She ended up um, doing a sketch and a bunch of different stuff tied to the investigation. Started uh, the investigation kind of, we focused on an a individual um, there that had uh, an issue with their family and ended up going to Dallas and, and following up on some uh, two Hispanic guys we think had, had some stuff done with it. The district attorney at that time didn't want us to really move forward to, with the investigation, so about mid-July, um, I kind of pretty, pretty much fell out of the investigation. They still had some things going on from time to time. I would get contacted, you know, from the from the county guys of, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Or we got this lead came in. Uh, there's another race, ranger stationed in Longview, Josh Mason. He was actually the lead on it. I came in and helped uh, just because Josh was was fairly new in the ranger division. Um, Betty ended up going off to college, I don't know, August, September sometime. She would text me periodically, and then her mom texted me a couple of times and said, hey, Betty's having a hard time. Do you mind talking to her? And, and you know, kind of, she she uh, she liked being able to talk to you. So we would communicate off and on through text message. I would talk to Betty on the phone from time to time. Um, FASA called me a few times wanting to know where the investigation was, what was going on with it. And it wasn't until, I, I don't know, 
know for sure. Sometime later in the close to Christmas time or something like that, that there became some flirting and things and text message. I couldn't tell you for sure. Who initiated that? Um, it was kind of, uh, I think probably a little bit of both. Um, she was going through, of course, to deal with her family, kids and all that. We just really started kind of communicating, confiding in each other, I guess, with some of the problems, you know, things going on. She basically has five kids and um, two of them were going to college, had three at home and, you know, her husband had done everything for her. They'd been married 20 years. So she didn't know where to get the oil changed in the car. She didn't, you know, that kind of, so she would ask me my advice. Hey, what do you think about this? Or um, they had already planned on moving to the Tyler area. So she had asked me, you know, um, they were looking in Eagles Bluff. What do you think about that? What, you know, is there other places around Smith County that you think would be good to live? And but she wanted her kids to go to Bullard schools, so she would send me pictures from time to time. What do you think about this house? Or what do you think about that? It was a lot of, I guess, I guess you could just friendship communication back and forth. Um, then, like I say, we started flirting a little bit, and then I don't know, I don't know what month the first time we actually met up and, and had a, a intimate um, uh, encounter. Um, communication back and forth, it wasn't, it wasn't just like a, I guess, like we had a intimate encounter and then everything was all said, everything about sex or anything like that. Still, like right before Major Huff brought this to me, that weekend, a tree had fell on her house that she's getting ready to, that she's having remodeled here. And she takes me, what do I do about this tree hitting my house? You know, I, I don't know what to do about it. And so, you know, get hold of your contract or things like that. So the communication, it was, I mean, we developed a friendship. So um, that would be those kind of deals. Um, at some point, and I don't remember when, she had texted me and said, hey, the, the kids found some text messages that, that said, you and I are gonna meet. and. They're mad, and they confronted me. <clears throat> and the kids confronted you? Confronted her. Confronted her? Yeah. She's, she's telling me this. Uh, the kids confronted me. They're mad because you're investigating their dad's death and all that. And, and I said, you know, pretty much, hey, you know, if they say something, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. Um, I don't, you know, I don't need this kind of stuff up. We got I, we got to get do away with this deal. And... Uh, she was like, well, you know, we're, we're good friends. I need you in my life. You know, I need, you're, you're kind of who I, I get advice from. She had had, um, she, she's having a falling out with her, her mother-in-law. She's having issues with some people she thought were family friends um, that were doing things. Uh, she felt like everybody was trying to get money from her because she had inherited, or not inherited, but um, Story. insurance policy uh, from her husband's death. Um, she's in, a, in the middle of her and her mother-in-law suing each other over their business together. So she would ask me about those kind of things. And um, it was, I don't know, it, it was somebody that it was easy, she was easy to talk to. She was having problems, I was having tr problems. And um, So was this a one-time thing or did it multiple encounters? <sighs> no, and it's sad to say, I couldn't tell you, three, maybe four, I, I don't know. For sure. Did any of this happen while you were working? No. Well, on my way home from work, I would go see her sometimes, um, but nothing like like in the middle of the day. Let's go meet up or something like that. No. Um, it'd be the end of the day, and she'd say, "Hey, I'm going to be at at the house that's being remodeled. Can you come see me?" Um, I, they're going to want me to ask this. Were you in your, your state car when you were yes. driving? There? Yes. Okay. And, and the major, that was one of the questions the major asked. Um, the communication, it was all done by state cell phone. Um, and I do have a personal cell phone. But 90, 90, 95% of everything was just chatting with each other, really. I mean, you know, how was your day? What's going on? Um, she knew I was going back and forth to the border. How, how was the border, you know? Is that normal to have text conversations with 
victims of other crimes on your state phone. Is that is that normal? Yeah, uh, we use that thing. We're very rarely in the office, so all sorts of crimes. I, there's no telling how many hundreds of people have my phone number um, from people we use to CIs on different things, from people that I've arrested that have. I've had to contact and say, hey, I got a warrant for you. Can you come meet me? Things like that. So there's hundreds of people that have my number. And there's been cr previous crimes um, where people have the number, you know, when they're, hey, I got additional information. It's, just, it's the easiest way to get in touch with us. So, you know, all my business cards have my cell phone number on them. Um, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. It just, <clears throat> the communication just changed from, a, I guess, a business type deal to a, a personal type relation. I mean, Communication. Okay. Um, when the kids confronted the mom and you, did y'all just stop all intimate relations? Um, or did that continue? I think there was one time after that. I don't. I don't know when the kids. I cannot. I'm bad. Is, it, is this still going on? No. No. Okay. When um, right before this happened, we had we had talked a little bit about. She was like, hey, I know you bad things in your marriage and all that. And I said, hey, look, I, I can't get out of my marriage. I've got way too much invested in it. Um, it's something maybe down the road if things with my wife don't work out. You know, it, it was a joke about a three to five year plan, you know, type deal. I always said it's going to be three to five years before I can do anything. Right. Um, and so it was, and that was, I mean, she, I don't know. She was just like, well, you know, I'm going to move to the Bullard area and, and um, my, I want my kids to go to Bullard, and, and she knew I lived in Bullard. She didn't know where I live, but she just knows I live in the Bullard area. And it was, uh, I, don't, I don't know, there wasn't any, any future to it. It was just one of those deals that happened. And um, there was times that I would see her, and it wouldn't be intimate. You know, I mean, I, we would just literally sit and talk like this. Or the first time I went to go see the house, she was like, what do you think about it? Here's, here's what I'm going to do to have it remodeled. What do you, I want to put a pool in and all that and things like that. I'm like, you're, you're spending all your money. You're going through all your money. You know, you got two kids in college. you got three more. I mean, uh, your settlement's big, but you're going to go through it fast if sure. you don't slow down. You don't have any income. Um, so things like that. Um, and she knew the stuff going on with me about, you know, issues and, and, and stuff. So she was just... More or less, hey, what? How's everything with that? What's going on with that? Um, so, but it wasn't like I say. I don't know percentages wise. 90, 90, 90 95 percent was just talking, and there was you know a small percentage that there was some intimacy. But um, once this happened, I, I she sent me a text, kind of, hey, what's going on? I said, hey, I can't communicate with you anymore, um, and I don't know if who, if anybody's talked to her or what. She sent me one text since then, you know. I said, hey, I'm in trouble. I can't be communicating with you. And she sent me one text. I think you're joking. You know, why, why are you doing that? And I sent another one back and said, hey, look, I'm, I'm serious. You know, I, I could lose my job over this. I can't have any more communication with you. So um, I, haven't, I haven't seen her. It's not, Tyler's a big town. I don't know that I'll run into her um, here, but and I was telling the major yesterday, uh, we were looking at moving to a different part of Tyler anyway, and so here in the next week or so, I'll have my house up for sale to to get out of the Bullard area. Did your wife know about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right at, right after I, I met with the major, I went and told her. Um, we've had several big conversations, and and I just kind of laid it out to her why I felt like we got in the position and, and that we were in, um, not to the part of me having an affair, but uh, she just she agreed the problems that we were having and. Um, once this gets behind us, we're going to go to counseling. You know, it was one of those deals. I didn't know where this was going or or I'd never been through anything like this. So, um, But our communication is a lot better. Um, we're actually discussing the, some of the problems and what led up to, to all this happening. So um, I don't know. I won't say it's made us have a better relationship, but it's made our communication work a lot better. So Okay. Do you, do you think this investigation, the actual murder investigation, is compromised at all? Could be? I don't think so. We, um, we ruled her out early. 
we we went through I don't know how many leads I couldn't tell you um, what what my role with the investigation was because I'd handled several big investigations I kind of oversaw the investigation <clears throat> every morning we would sit down and what leads have come in and we, so they, those would be assigned out we would all go out and do interviews or locate people come back in and then we would go uh, either that afternoon or the next morning we'd rehash and go through um, what led us down the path that we were going on this investigation is we actually had a, an informant call in and we went and met with him and he said, hey, this, this man Kamali tried to hire me two years ago to kill Ronald Haraney. And so we went with that. He gave us a lot of information about things that Kamali had said and done and we were able to, to corroborate some of the things that he, he had told us. He is a, a dope head, so we tried to use him to do we did some recorded phone calls. We tried to get him to do some other things with us to get Kamali locked in one way or another, and, and he went south on us. So um, one of the communications, and that's how we ended up in Dallas. So uh, with those those Hispanic guys, I, I think the, the investigation, um, anything further that goes on with the interviews, if, if they were able to lock this thing in together, the problem is there's no evidence at the scene whatsoever, no DNA. There's a bullet fragment. Um, any anything further that goes through, I don't think it would be a problem without me being involved, and I still think that that it wouldn't be a, an issue for them to get a conviction if they can get interviews and things done with some of these people and actually tie them to the case better. If a and this is, I, I don't want to get into the criminal part of it because that's mm -hmm. gotten really nothing to do with 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 my part of it. If if a conviction or a, a trial came out of it, you think you'd have to testify? I didn't do anything in this investigation that I did not have a Gray County person or Ranger Mason with me. Okay. Um, that's just kind of the way I work. I mean, there was <clears throat> there was a few conversations I had with family members about something to do, like we ruled out. But as far as the investigation focused on these individuals, there's multiple people involved, and I haven't done any interviews specific to that. Um, that that somebody wasn't in the room with me. And I know you may not be aware of this. Do you think, did you ever discuss it with Ranger Mason about the relationship or is no. it just between you and her? Nobody knows. Okay. Other than the folks that are involved in, in this now. Okay. And how were you notified that this came to light? Um, Major Huff met with me and Tyler. Okay. How long ago was that? 26th, I think. 26th. I think that's right. Wait, I have a, uh, I'm sorry, I have a memo. I think it's the 26th. Yes. Yeah. The morning of the July 26th. 26th. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> the investigation, I more or less said it, it's gone cold because it's, there's no, no DNA evidence, no firearms evidence, no trace evidence at the scene to tie these individuals that, that the investigation focused on. Um, shy of a confession from one of these people um, or getting another informant or somebody involved um, I, I think it's going to be hard to ever get that part tied together um, but as far as the investigation if it went to trial they could they could do a trial without him having me involved okay. no I mean do you think this I know I've already asked you that question about it being put in the, uh, the case in jeopardy but I, I don't, guess if we have other, I mean, if Josh was with you the entire time. Jo Josh is there. Um, ben Reynolds was, was the guy from Gray County that, that worked with me a lot during the investigation. Another guy, Gary Robinson, those two um, were guys that worked with me during the investigation. But like I say, I, I kind of oversaw everything, but there was <clears throat> interviews that they did that had ties to the case um, that probably lock it in somewhat better than, than some of the ones that I did. Do you see any conflicts or any issues about future doing future investigations in Smith County? No, th this was actually over in Gray County. Or Gray County. Be being a ranger in Smith County or for that company, do you see any conflicts? I don't, I don't know what the district attorney said because uh, I haven't talked to Carl. Uh, the Gray County Sheriff and I um, have been friends for 25 years. 
uh, I actually went and talked to him after this came out and uh, after the major t had been with him and went more or less to apologize. I mean, I, I worked for him when I first got law enforcement at Kilgore and, and we talked for probably two and a half hours and um, he he told me and, and, and supposedly told the major that he didn't really give a shit about this. I mean, he, he trusts me. He knows the way I do things. He, he knew this was totally out of character for me. And he told the major he'd bring me back over there tomorrow to work a murder if he had one. Um, I've got a real good bond with, with the guys here. I've been, I've been here in East Texas other than when I was in Athens mm -hmm. um, uh, forever. Uh, the sheriff here in Smith County, he and I worked a church fire investigation together. I've known him uh, prior to that a little bit. The DA in, here in Smith County and I are, are very close. Um, I haven't reached out to Carl because I got told not to be going over there. Sure. So, um, but the DA, he knew me from when I first started at Gray County back in 1995. So I've known all these people a long time. The, the guy that's running for DA in Gray County, he and I worked at Kilgore PD together. Uh, we're still good friends. So I don't think it would ever be a problem. I, I don't know as far as public opinion, if it got out, you know, if that would sway things one way or another. But um, I, I've always, I've always given 100%. I've always worked to do the right thing. And, and this is, you know, the, the one screw up I, I made and, and unfortunately it's a big one um, but you know that this is not me and this is not the way I, I do my business um, I've been with the department 17 years and uh, I think everybody that I've worked for or worked with you know thinks highly of the my, my, the way I, I, t I conduct myself and, and take care of business so okay well, Brad, that's all the questions I have on this. I think you've covered everything. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the re interview before I uh, before we're done? No, not that I can think of. I mean, I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. I don't know. Okay. I think anything. you've covered everything. Okay. Um, do you have any questions on for me on process or or any anything? This is open. Um, Happy Man, I, I don't know. You know, I know y'all's process takes a lot longer than what some of us want or are accustomed to. On well, plans. how it works is I complete the, the report of investigation that goes to the Inspector General. <coughs> she reviews it and then forwards it to the Ranger Chain of Command. Okay. And they will make their determination and then our legal department review, reviews it. And uh, I believe it's is Prince the Chief, Chief, Chief Prince? I believe he would be the one that would be making the determination off of this. Um, it's not a fast process, but since this isn't THP, where there's just a lot of investigations, I think it'd be pretty quick. Okay. Um, the one thing, um, and I don't know if you can tell me this, Brandon. Um, I assume, and, and I think "sustained" is the the word. These. I guess that's how I, I can't remember how I haven't looked at it in a long time, but um, with with that and with the new, I guess Michael Morton acts and all that, um, and they can ask for a copy of our personnel files and things like that. I've had defense attorneys do that to me when I was a trooper for DWI stuff. The, I know this stuff goes into my file. Is that something that just shows I've had a sustained C one investigation or a or whatever, well, or do they get an actual copy of what is written up about the investigation? From what I understand is open records applies to time off only okay. and above. Good. So a sustained complaint with time off is something that we would supply the public in an open records request. When it deals with the Morton Act and Brady and those issues, right. our policy is it relies on the yeah, the uh, commissioned the commission officer to present it, talk to the DA about it. Gotcha. Good. And then the DA makes a determination whether they are going to make it exculpatory or not. Gotcha. Okay. It's up to the DA. I mean, we as a department are not going to hand out stuff to defense attorneys. Right. We're not going to. Gotcha. If it's up to the DA, but it is the prosecutors it's kind of it's up to them how they want to handle it okay. and then we usually 
whatever their determination is or decisions, we usually will follow suit. Um, this will be a conversation that will be made between the chief and then on down the line of what, how they want to do do that if it comes to that down the line. Gotcha. I mean, we're talking about down the line. Right. But that would be a conversation with the executive management of how they want to do it. Okay. Um, I hope that cl opens it up a little bit. Yeah, I, you know, that was just one of the things that um, I, I know I'm, I'm seeing that more and more that depending on the, the type of cases and everything. Mm -hmm. and, um, but. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> but no, that, that's the only question I had. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe that's all I got. So we'll in the interview. We'll in the interview. We'll.